Alrighty people, here we go. The remix compilation, all the remixes for Simulation, the Virtual Riot album from... I couldn't quite believe what I was looking at when I saw when this came out, the original LP, September 2021. Still can't fathom it, I still can't believe it. Completely blew my mind looking at that. But here we have 14 remixes, I think. Uh, yeah, 14 tracks here. And in total, the compilation, just over 50 minutes. A load of new, fresh takes on the original tunes from the original LP. Kicking off here with the VIP, Virtual Riots VIP of Simulation. Title tune. Okay, let's get it. <laughs> Really, really good melody. Always loved it. Always enjoyed it. Just beautiful. Ooh. Yeah, knew it was coming. Oi. Oi. Yeah, there are some notable changes so far from the original, but keeping the essence of that original, keeping the structure, I think, as well, for the most part. A lot of colour here, a lot of colour, a lot of flavour. It's vibrant and radiant, I like it. Oi. 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 Oh yeah, I like that a lot. Big fan of that. Big, big fan of that second drop. Second main drop, if you want to call it that. Definitely a good opening to the compilation and quite a few people were saying in the chat here that they prefer the VIP to the original and I'm gonna have to agree. I think generally speaking has a more refined feel to it. I think the production is just that bit, that bit cleaner, that bit sharper. I remember uh, with that original, sorry, that uh, there were certain sounds that felt a little bit um, out of place and that didn't quite work with the entire context of the tune, but this one just runs really smoothly. And yeah, like I was just touching on there, new ideas, new sections that just give it a whole different kind of personality. I think that kind of a third of the way through to midway point that we got there, like really grisly and like quite um, bubbly, almost a bit crushy, but then with a load of color and a load of uh, vibrancy about it, radiancy about it, that was fantastic. A good opener, good way to kick it off and a good way of reworking that original tune. Next up, we have Tuhu Rhythm, the Subtronics remix. This should be quite large. Let's get it. This is, if anyone was gonna remix or rework this kind of fun melody, Subtronics. Ooh. Now yeah, this intro, really bigging it up. Whatever comes is gonna have to follow suit in a way. Oi. Oi. That little snare. It's another example, I think, for me of, you know, not the most enthralling ideas, not, not that complex with the innovation but some of the sound usage is just so so good loads of energy here loads of color this midsection really well paced out okay mm. A classic Subtronics track in many a way. Some really fun melodic play that we got right at the very beginning. That was a fantastic introduction. Got it in the midsection as well, which was really well kind of mapped out and managed. And uh, the direction of it really made sense, I thought, musically. Just a lot of fun. The heaviness, again, we've got, I think, another stompy Subtronics kind of example, especially in the first half. Loads of fantastic sound usage and uh, stuff just perking the idea up. But yeah, I think inherently there, it's another stomping kind of approach uh, with, yeah, just fantastic sounds kind of making it a bit more edgy and giving it a bit more spark. 
than if it was just like completely straightforward, completely uh, one dimensional run of the mill. It's not that. And then that second drop, again, quite simple, but just with a real kind of bite and uh, grizzliness about it that I enjoyed quite a bit. Not a bad one there from Subtronics. Next up, we have the Mr. Bill and Elidurp collaborative remix of Chroma. Another amazing lead line, Melody. I forgot about these. I forgot about these. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Uh huh. Oy. I mean, look, listen to this. It's got all the kind of prowess design wise that we've heard from these two in the past working together. That idea, that first idea, a little bit, a little bit jolty, a little bit. A little bit stuck. Oh. Oh. It's almost a bit of a neuro situation that we're getting here, isn't it? Very short-lived, that one, as a remix from those two. Yeah, I mean, they've put out more impressive material together, I think, in the past, uh, those guys as a collaboration, as a, as a partnership, a duo. But a lot of flavour in there, as you can still hear. I think mostly... The section surrounding the heaviness, that bit of heaviness that we did get, the drop, quite stop-start, had a few too many gaps, felt a bit jagged and I didn't really, hearing it there for the first time, feel like I could uh, properly get into it. But everything surrounding that was fantastic. The introduction, really good, reworking again of the original lead line. And then the stuff following the first drop that we got, a midsection, you think it might be that, but it kind of melts and blends and folds into a bit of an outro situation. It sounds a bit neuro-y as it goes on without being quite that. All the production stuff is there. It's just that main idea was a little bit, just a little bit out of sorts, I think, given what they have put out before. Track number four, So Sorry, Ranks Remix. I'm sorry, mate. Oh. Let's have a go, you mag. Mate, hearing these remixes, we're only four in and I'm like, there were so many good little hooks and melodies and lead lines from that original album. Like, wow, the guy knows how to write them. I'm sorry, mate. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like you can feel the flow, but it still feels like there's an emptiness there, like a hollowness to the to the overall sound. Might be a, might be a mixing thing. Let's have a go, you mag. I'm never going to pass up any opportunity to say that, just so you know. I mean, another cool idea, to be fair. I'm sat here saying uh, I'm, I'm not massive on the execution, generally, of the heaviness that we get there. But it's a, it's a kind of rock, metal, gnarly kind of redoing of that original. And I think that's a good idea. That is a good idea. Probably not something we're going to get as the compilation goes on again don't ruin it for me please but yeah i just think that is a cool idea to have redone it in that way but you know those things you can't ignore them really we do get some good flows here for sure but it's just that that kind of hollowness and that emptiness that a uh, little bit lacking i think in the mixing uh, on the mixing front that just takes away from those ideas a little bit because the flows are fantastic. There's a really nice kind of almost like a groovy feel about it. The way that those uh, the the way those notes were kind of moving along, just a bit hollow. The sound on that um on that execution, how it came off. But track number five. After that, we have Basics Vivid remix of Dreaming. Okay, okay. Fuck me. Five minutes twenty. It is a journey, isn't it? I imagine it is going to be a journey. Here we go. Can you imagine if I just chundered on stream? Just, just fucking chundered everywhere. This is so basic. Not the music, but as in the producer. Just had to obviously make that clear. I really feel like this is a proper basic tune. Again, the producer. I'm not going to say it again. 
trou. Aïe. Again, just like usual with basic, just a lot going on. It's just a stream of consciousness kind of outlay of ideas. Very much swimming along this idea. And that is all well, that tallies with a lot of basics output from the last uh, last couple of years. I think a lot of his music without like a main idea to pull you back in again and again, but the, the kind of flow of it and the transition from one section to another is infectious in itself. Did it change key again? Or am I just imagining that? It's definitely got an abstract feel to it so far, which is a very interesting way to redo a, an original with such an identifiable original vocal. Do you know what I mean? Okay, I think we can safely say here with around half a minute to go that we have uh, an extensive outro, which is lovely. I think this is the most out there conceptually song of the compilation so far. It doesn't have a particular set of ideas or motifs that it goes back to again and again. It's just like, what can I get out on the page? What can I just put out there? What sounds can I put together and just have it cohere and move along and swim along and flow along? in a coherent way kind of thing. That is essentially what this, and, and a lot of stuff in his recent discography comes across to me as. There's not those those things, those hooks to kind of go back to again and again and bring you back in, but it's more a thing of allowing your mind to wonder whilst it's playing. There's no like particular thing about it. That is like, yes, that's a thing that is drawing me in each time. It's just an experience. It's just a, a body of music that is there to interpret as you will without those identifiable things to give it that active bit of personality, if you know what I mean. The vocal there is completely different, reworked in a completely different way. It's given a new identity, and that's really cool. Next up, we have The Forgotten Remix, quite literally, in terms of it is by The Forgotten, anyway, of Exile. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, bit of a mid-tempo vibe, okay. Yeah, cyberpunk energy, cyberpunk energy. Oh, some nice fluorescent translucent sounds going on there. a really nice uh, journeying feel about this one I think in owing to the style overall and I think someone someone in the chat sorry was saying oh yeah you know driving late at night down the highway the motorway no one else around and you got the roof off the top of your car kind of vibes or you know windows down I concur I do concur it's all right uh, I, I like the idea I like that kind of energy being brought to the compilation at this point uh, a bit of a cyberpunky mid tempo y kind of feel about it, which is, you know, quite nice. I like the, the reworking and dropping in of the original vocal bits. That was good. I mean, the heavier bits, there's a good, a good journeying storytelling feel about them. I don't know if the production is all there. It does again have a bit of a scant feel about it. You know, wanted a bit more fullness, a bit more meat on the bone feel, you know, just something getting my, getting my stomach tied in knots kind of thing. Needed a bit more fuzz and a bit more gristle about it just a tad empty just a little bit but um you know again a good a good uh, dose of that style i think which is important for the compilation at this point just to provide something a little bit a little bit different from what we have had already next up track number seven don kong big fan of don kong the remix of fork funeral the knife party one What is it going to be? Some kind of... Okay. Okay. Ooh, it's an oozy little number. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. It's alright so far. Again, I appreciate this kind of energy being brought into the compilation at this point. Just a little bit more upbeat. Got a bit of a garagey flavour about it. Oozy synth usage. Again, points where you just want a little bit more going on. There are quite a few available gaps here that you can hear, but I like the I like the idea, I like the energy. Yeah, nothing particularly special I don't think that we're getting here. The energy is good for sure. But you know, mostly just like this is just fine. Yeah, it does have a distinctly midway through a compilation kind of vibe about it, if you know what I mean. Like, not particularly statement making or attention grabbing, just uh, just all right, you know, ticking the compilation over. A little injection of energy with that garagey kind of beat, which uh, is just perking up the overall just hype for the compilation at this point as we're at this midway uh, position. There were some good sounds in there for sure, the little cowbell sounds, they were good. But uh, yeah, just just wanted a bit more. Just wanted a bit more, bit more oomph to it. Next up, we have the Danny Demand remix of Back in Time. Excited for this one. Formerly known as Dan's Demand, of course, as uh, many of you, if not all of you, will know. Nice drawn out feel to the introduction so far. I'm a fan. Oh, nice. Euphoric is definitely the word. That's just what's been, or what has just been used in the chat. Euphoric. Definitely got that exalted colourful feel about it. I think there was maybe another step to take with that idea, the do 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 Maybe to have like a do 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 That's, uh, you know, that's just per personally what I would have done. But, not my tune is it? Danny Demand's tune. Back in with the idea, love it. Ooh, loving all these little percussive touches at the end here in this outro. The streaming culture has very much invaded this scene, uh, for better or worse. But uh, yeah, nice to hear a, a big, a big stretched out and drawn out five minute tune there from Danny Demand. The remix album for the original album definitely deserves like a, a big euphoric moment. And uh, we, we do get that there. I think there were more steps it could have taken, more steps that track could have taken in the um, in the drops, you know, different playing about with the notes and whatnot, maybe had a bit more of a surging feel beneath the tune just to give it that even more kind of epic leaning. But don't forget, you know, I've only heard it once. So again, it feels like another one that I will get a lot more out of uh, as I go back to it more, given how much is going on there. Danny Demand very much putting her stamp on that original, I think. That is good. Next up we have the Frankie Nuts and Oliver's remix of This Could Be Us. Now this could be, this could be big. I'm thinking about the original vocal. I'm thinking about all the different sections we get there. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm low-key a little bit pumped for this one. So let's see if it, if it delivers, you know. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. Web, 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 web. Oh, oh. Got that bouncy dubstep energy. Bouncy melodic dubby dub 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 dubs. I say this is up there with the most emphatic so far, just how the heaviness is laid out and tied in with the, the original vocal as well, which is obviously very memorable. Be... 
definitely would have that one down as one of the most emphatic so far. The ideas, they're, they're all right. They're not amazing. They're quite a bit of a straightforward and simple feel about them, but it's just got that melodic, surging, you know, really thick dubstep, Frankie Nuts, Oliver's kind of energy about it that they're both renowned for individually. So when you put them together, you know, you've had the Tritone EP, we've had many a collaboration between them. It is a good partnership that we've got there. You know, not with the Chime, Chime not there to be fair, but you know, just with those two, they make good music together. You know, we've gleaned that much over the years. So it's just got that, yeah, surging melodic dubstep energy about it, a good bounce to it as well, good reworking of the original vocals. So a lot of good foundational elements there without being, you know, that special with the drops again, they're just all right. I think but it's just got that that bounding feel about it you're just like yeah I can feel myself getting into this one a fair bit but we've got Mr. Bill returning here by himself so Mr. Bill remix of Folk Funeral let's get it this is definitely making me want to hear the original again because that fucking original Uh-huh, okay. Okay, I think it started really good with the reworking of that. They did ding boom ba ding boom. What it went into in the progression, I was a bit more like, okay, just wanted to push it along a little bit more, but pretty decent overall so far. Oh. Ooh, a bit of a breakbeat flavour about this one, you know. My DJ gonna. Mate, what is going on? I'm just going to let my brain uh, re reorder, having just been completely scrambled there. Cheers, Mr. Bill. Up until that final section, I'm like, it just feels a little bit scattered and a bit all over the place with the ideas there and a couple of the ideas as well, just having a bit of an odd, weird feeling about them with the execution. But when that final section comes around, I'm like, oh... Oh, so you meant to do that. Oh, so that's what you were trying to do. You were trying to have this weird, like, throwing paint at the canvas and seeing what it looks like at the end kind of vibe, you know? There is structure here. There's definitely order, but we get it mostly in the first half. The introduction, fantastic, reminding me of why exactly I love the original tune, the original cut, and then it goes on. And just as it goes on, the ideas just become a little less kind of conventional and a little bit weird and kooky and out there the pace is still there and we go through different percussive structures i think different genres even you know by the end you're like okay now i get what you were going for but initially i was like yeah this just feels scrambled all over the place not really entirely sure what it's going for even with a lot of good energy very much being there after that we have the neon angel vip from uh, virtual riot of course it's his original lp DNB, you can feel that DNB percussion. Is it gonna go there? Is he gonna go there? Yeah, yeah, get fucked, get fucked. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not fully like, I'm not quite getting up, but it's a, it's a ripper, and we are gonna have to do a little bit. Right on that biatch. Okay. Yeah, we're going back for that. We're going back for that. Fuck off, fuck off, man. Ah, oh, mate, he's just done that so well. He's just done that so well. Oh, mate, it just keeps delivering. 
Oh, mate, those are those stabs. They're attacking. They're digging deep. I like that. Getting right under your skin. Come on. Mate. Ooh, yo, 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 this is decent. It's decent. Oh, oh, gone for it. Gone for it. Okay. Oh, okay. Initially, I was a big fan of that. Dumping, pounding, big room techno kind of feel about it. Boom, boom, boom. Would it, would it, would it, would it? You know, progressed into. I wasn't wasn't quite as big on. Yeah, we definitely have love for for him to keep going with that. That boom, 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 boom. because yeah, you know, would have done that well. Would have done that pretty well, I think. Just would have kept with that that techno release for the second drop, just a bit more. Just you know, you, you can switch it up at some point, but just to stick with it that little bit more, just to show a little bit more confidence in that idea, because of course it is something that's been done. A lot by now but him doing it I don't think he has done it before with this recent you know surge of people going for that kind of thing so him doing it is a cool thing looking forward to how he's gonna do it and then it's just you know cut short and stifled and straight jacketed just a little bit which is a little bit of a shame and it wouldn't be so much of a shame if the follow-up if the progression on it was like really good and really effective but it's this weird clanky kind of breakdown with a snare that doesn't quite work and it just feels a little bit just a little bit haphazardly put together and like an idea that wasn't wasn't fully formed and wasn't fully developed if you know what i mean that aside this is one of the best on the compilation so far i think the reworking of the original vocal i think is really good the introduction was fantastic the way it built up the dmb that we get in that first drop has just got everything that you want i think given for what or given sorry what he's going for there it's got the production on point the sound usage on point just the respect for space and timing and the gaps you know we talked about gaps earlier just not being not being quite that good and then being quite like available and quite there making the track feel a bit empty but he got them completely right i think with the arrangement there so yeah loads of good on that track very much sounds like him in a dmb format and it works very well and a clever a clever thing to have done a clever thing sorry for him to have done i think putting out a dmb tune at this point when the style of music, the genre, is really picking up in the States at the moment. But it's just that second drop that brings it down a little bit where you're just like, hmm, not entirely sure about that decision making there uh, with that second drop in particular. But beyond that, looking at one of the best, I think, on the compilation. But track number 12, we have the new She remix of Dream Logic. <laughs> Oh, I like this, I like this progression a bit. It's got a very attacking feel about it. Execution not quite there, but you know, a nice a nice development I think conceptually given what given what we get with that first release of sound, the main drop, which was yeah, a bit ineffective. got a similar thing in the first drop it just feels like it's there there's not really a, a personality or a kind of character about it I don't think very nice color to that one to be fair and uh, some very good sound usage reflective of Nushi's colorful style overall that follow-up drop uh, well it was a more like a progression I suppose to the first drop was uh, quite good I like the attacking feel of that idea even if the execution wasn't quite there to match but yeah for the most part I just felt a bit just felt a bit aimless like you can feel going for something uh, quite melodically flavorsome and just uh, catchy and melodic and stuff like that but um, yeah just didn't 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 quite reach that high point just felt kind of there like sounds existing that are being brought together without a specific kind of aim or goal behind it that is just giving it 
that real um, attention grabbing um, appeal. Next up and penultimately actually, track number 13 I think, we have the Lumpuskity remix of uh, Simulation. <laughs> can just imagine a little hobbit just playing this on the flute, like... Entrar en la simulación. <sighs> I mean, I want to say, like, I want to evaluate it in a serious way, because it's not that bad, but it's just... I was really wondering how how Lumpuskity could put the Lumpuskity spin on an original that is just so full of emotion and you know melodic flavor prowess all that stuff and kind of bring it back down to a Lumpa level and uh, that's it Entra en la simulación I mean yeah we're we're rewinding now because that made me laugh it did make me laugh en la simulación. Look, that's the best snare of all time. A whistle, a whistle, a whistle, a whistle. <laughs> the goat bleating, the bongos, the whistle, the siren that's there for like 0 0.1 seconds. Very clever. Yeah, uh, no notes. No notes. Um, zero notes. Moving on. We're not alone VIP to round off the compilation. Let's get it. Lumpa's in the fucking chat. Lumpa is in the fucking chat. Just a little moment of appreciation. Just a little, just a little moment. Now we have um, goats existing in the chat. Feel like I've heard this before. I have heard this before, haven't I? Wait, can someone just clarify? Is this is this song been out for a while already? Dan dan dan. Mate, stop confusing me. Stop confusing me with all these VIPs. I don't know which one's which. Bam bam bam. Yeah bam bam. It does feel like even, especially compared to the one that I've heard, that I think I've heard before, that this has a, an updated, freshened up feel about it. It's a stunning vocal. You can't deny. You can't deny that the vocal has got summer about it that draws you in again and again. That's it. That's the compilation done and wrapped up, all 14 cuts. We started with Virtual Riot, we ended with Virtual Riot, and the rest of the compilation did cause a bit of a Virtual Riot, if I'm being honest. Yeah, not complete full flow Virtual Riot, but not that far from it, I'm gonna have to say. You know, with each bit of heaviness we get there, I think more so with the first, you've got those real distinct bits of 
emptiness, those gaps that are just quite there, like a bit of a chasm with each one, basically, where you're just like, you want a, you want a little bit more in there. The kind of gap filling that is needed, that isn't quite needed as much with the, the D&B VIP that, uh, that we heard earlier, the Neon Angel ones. So yeah, just little important differences here and there between different tracks that he's put out. The second drop, a lot more characteristic of him, I think, just a lot more full, a lot more going on and some good reworking of that dreamy vocal. So um, yeah, a nice note to end on there. Doesn't feel like a star-studded compilation to me quite yet. I will be going back to it a few times more. Please don't forget, this is the first time I've heard it. I'm not gonna have my complete, uh, full, rounded off views on this compilation. The Neon Angel VIP from Virtual Riot, I think is the one that is um, really standing out to me at the moment with the, the DMB that we're getting there. I'm enjoying that quite a bit. The stuff that isn't quite as good does uh, is, is a bit more apparent and available here and does bring the compilation uh, just down a little bit. But there are, there are moments for sure. And again, like I said, we'll be going back to it a decent amount as a compilation overall. So uh, yeah, often these kind of these kind of albums don't get the remix treatment for a whole compilation, but that is what we got here, and I'm glad for that. Uh, looking forward to getting back into these tunes. So yeah, there we go. Simulation, the DLC from Virtual Riot.